What did you study? I studied to be an attorney. And uh, I was an attorney, a defense attorney for five years. I'm starting, I was 21, so it was the most stupid thing in the world. But it's, uh, I mean, I don't regret it at all. I'm from a, a background of family that has been artisan, industrial, that from Jura. And uh, like my grandfather was doing a lot of accessories for Poiret. I had always this in the background, and it's already in Paris that I started when my brother took over the factory to do things for this. I was always, the, it was not, you know, it could not be like so divided, but it did not have a. a I went to the States because I wanted to live there, but I was already developing. Uh, a line from me, Michel Ami, that was mainly about accessories and sunglasses and bangles that I don't have this morning, but usually I hear from here. When I was in LA, I, I realized I was feeling like nothing was right. I needed something to wear, that's all, because all things were too dressy or too t shirty or so it's there, uh, you know, I needed to adopt, to adapt like the way I was living there. So when I, I moved to LA, I opened a store. I was distributing the, the thing that I was making, still in France at that time. And then I opened a little factory in uh, downtown LA. But at the same time, I opened places and restaurants, everything in LA. I was doing a few different things. And how you met Rick? Uh, I think I had seen him in the street. Now, you know, his look now, his look before was not so different, but a little more fierce. Meaning like, uh, you know, a chain here, and he had this kind of turban. I don't think he had a chain on his nose when he came. But he was sticking out. I had a life, I had a daughter, I was married, the, the things that to entangle for a while. Because he came, let's say, to work for me, and I think I was certainly the first one to feel that he had a lot, he had this talent without talking about it, and stopped my company without saying or like losing interest in it because of him. In a, so it went in a very flowing way. It, so and uh, so if now I'm uh, if I'm amazed, it's uh, it's because it keeps going. <laughs> Did you ever had the uh, uh, woman whom you would like to look like? All the women were especially were so beautiful and incredible. I always like wrinkles and skin that was dark and something, and their style and the thing on their head, and I think that was what impressed me the most. Or if I had an influence, it's there. I was always off, like, uh, I don't think I was trying to look like somebody special. I was, uh, because, uh, you know, like uh, my mother was telling me, but, but where are you going from? And that was, um, it was more like a dream. I was always uh, in, uh, in the story, the one, on, uh, the one Thousand and One Nights, and something very nomad, berber. I was more attracted to this than actresses. Mm -hmm. But if you talk about style, I think the best style they were, it was from the Jean-Luc Godard movie, and I think uh, from the cigarette to everything, I, I really will say that it, at the time I was growing up and there was those Godard movies, that's where I thought the style was. And what about love? What, uh Part of your life is it taking? I'm at a point where I, I imagine I would like to live so many different lives, but I see that I don't really have the time. So perhaps the first time 
I try to think that I should make choice of what uh, I will really love to do because uh, I cannot make uh, like uh, 40 years plan <laughs> or whatever. Or well, usually I, I don't really plan. It's it comes like something different arrive and make me change. What is luxury for you? Luxury, what thing you can do yourself or what I'm saying. You have the chance to be uh, learning this, uh, uh, be able to get a piece of art that you love. This is a luxury, it's not uh, when you are telling me the words, it's like, you know, I was just answering about what you will look in fashion magazine, what luxury is, but there is luxury. Try to get luxury in everything you do. and. Um, if it thinks you love and you feel in it, yeah, yeah, there is uh, so much luxury and to be able to have such a, a good relationship with people. Misery is like fight, misery is like, you know, you know starting with being broke. <laughs> and do you believe in God? I don't know what that God is. I believe, uh, you know, I believe in DNA, I believe that genes have memory, I really believe in civilization, it's what I want to know most. Well, let's say, I'm, I, don't have a, I don't have a religion that to put a name on it, but um, no, I, because the more the sciences are finding, I am more proud of uh, humanity and thinking that people that can behave like incredible uh, human beings are without the help of a God. That's what I believe in. And what is your perfect day? A perfect day. A perfect day where there is a lot of chaos, where a lot of things are happening and we have to do a little bit of this, and then somebody is coming you are not expecting, and then you are I'm going to see Pina Bausch, like in 79, to discover of Bob Wilson, and then uh, I'm coming home and I get a huge bouquet of flowers from Rico Wells and then, uh, and then we speak all night. That's a perfect day. Mm -hmm. To be walking in the beach in Malibu with Rick, like dragging a little boogie board I never used, but still, and feeling it's a perfect day. You are an incredible strong woman. How woman, especially woman, I would ask, uh, has to be, for example, as strong as you are. I'm always conscious of, or if anything could bother me, that in the relativity of things, it's so innocent and small. I don't want to be small. So, that's why perhaps thinking, the, perhaps I'm such a pessimistic in a way that I'm optimistic about everything. And tomorrow is always a nice, nicer day, or trying to make it this way. And what keeps you going? What gives you energy? Tea and cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs>